so good morning everyone and uh, thanks for joining this session this session is very important because you have taken the admission for regulatory affairs so some people have taken for regulatory affairs formulation some have taken for the global regulatory affairs so i thought to discuss about what is it all about what is regulatory affairs what are the different regulatory bodies and how uh, our india is progressing and uh, wh where we stand you know currently uh, as a indian pharmaceutical industry so all the contents uh, are gathered from the internet and the source is acknowledged so this is a brief agenda uh, what is ra what is the role of ra professional why ra people are required in the industry what is regulation what is the difference between law and regulation what is guidance document how do i find current guidance document what is the submission and different regulatory bodies like us fda europe health canada japan uk mhra asian ich and the current scenario about indian industry, pharmaceutical industry so that's uh, for today's discussion and i hope this topics are very interesting to all of you so let us discuss what is ra ra is a regulatory affairs so it's a profession within in health industry namely pharmaceutical medical device biological functional food and so on that means regulatory affairs are the people who are not considered only in pharma regulatory affairs people are hired in any area nowadays if you see medical device is also booming sector nutraceutical is booming sector then even chemicals fertilizers so wherever you go there are huge opportunity for the regulatory affair professional and that's the reason you are here uh, to learn uh, with raj gprc all the aspects of regulatory affairs and what these professionals uh, are uh, like doing in the industry in the different industry if they are hired as regulatory affair professional so this profession uh, is developed from the desire of governments to protect public health right by controlling the safety and efficacy of products in areas including pharma veterinary medicinal uh, product medical devices pesticide agrochemicals cosmetics and complementary medicine then ra professional profession is at uh, its heart all about collecting analyzing communicating and uh, you know communicating the risk and benefit of the healthcare product to regulatory agencies and public all over the world this third para is very very important when whenever you will be asked during your interview or during your group discussion that what is ra ra what is regulatory affairs then that time your answer should be regulatory affairs is collecting analyzing and communicating risk and benefits of healthcare or the pharmaceutical product to different agencies all over the world why i say all over the world because this world is comprising of regulated market and the semi regulated market there are more than 257 countries in this world and this globe is divided into regulated market and semi regulated market so whenever we talk about regulated market that means it's it has highly regulatory system the laws rules regulations are very stringent and we have to follow it strictly when we talk about semi regulated means there is some kind of liberty you know is given but nowadays if you see uh, all the countries are moving towards the regulation so they would like to follow all the rules and regulations uh, made by all regulated countries like us europe japan so in old days we used to say that us europe japan canada all these are the you know major countries which falls under the regulated market and ich that is in, in uh, international council on harmonization of you know uh, for making all the guidance uh, uh, harmonization in case of uh, medicine and veterinary and other area they came together and form a body tripartite organization ich is a tripartite organization formed by us europe and japan and they have uh, you know uh, written such a beautiful guidance under the subject of quality safety efficacy and multidisciplinary so just remember that any health authority its main objective is to protect public health 
and to protect public health we have to meet those three parameters that is quality safety and efficacy without these three parameters we cannot move forward we cannot register our product we cannot get marketing approval from any of the country once we prove that our product is of good quality it is safe for human use and it is efficacious then only you get the marketing approval and that's the role performed by the regulatory affair for freshner because they are the people who collect the uh, documents from different stakeholders like r&d production in r&d also analytical department formulation department then in production they collect the stability data batch manufacturing record batch packaging record then they are dealing with the qa department all approved documents are received from the qa department or coas that is certificate of analysis the specification and everything is received from the qa department qc the analytical report and the analytical data the raw data is received from the qc department then comes to purchase and other uh, department where in purchase department help us to bring all the vendors document like dmf or uh, packaging material specification raw material specifications so all uh, ra people professional are dealing with all different different stakeholders in a company so those are the stakeholders uh, who are performing their duty in a different role uh, you know uh, like you see Uh, does his role uh, of uh, uh, regular the routine analysis of the sample then qa uh, perform his uh, duty for ensuring the quality throughout the you know production and maintain the life cycle of the product then uh, coming back to r and d r and d is again divided into analytical research and the formulation so analytical people help in development of the analytical methods then validation of analytical method then formulation people they uh, help in development of formulation different different types of formulation whether it is uh, liquid solid orals capsules parenterals and they take small small pilot batches and then they uh, take the commercialized batches that is scale up so uh, the regulatory people always uh, you know in a, uh, i would say it is a central department who helps in uh, uh, developing all the document the dossier as per country specific requirement then submit to health authority negotiate with health authority get the marketing approval so their role is like not only uh, uh, collecting analyzing and uh, you know uh, communicating risk and benefit to the health authority post that also the role continues because once we get the marketing approval then also we have to maintain that product years and years so we have to maintain the life cycle of the uh, product so ra as a profession in uh, is broader than the registration of products they advises companies both strategically and technically at the highest level so their role begins right from the development of a product to making marketing and post marketing as i said we maintain the life cycle management so uh, the ra professional role is not only specific to the registration and getting marketing approval but they help companies strategically right from the you know beginning right from the development of the product till making marketing and post marketing and they advise us all stages right uh, in terms of legal and the technical requirement suppose uh, if today uh, we are following uh, some ich uh, uh, q2 to uh, you know validate the method tomorrow the ich q2 r1 r2 r3 some uh, addition comes the updation comes so uh, regulatory people have to keep an eye on updated guidelines and they have to advise their people their stakeholder that look now this data is uh, will not be applicable we have to make the a uh, additional requirement as per the updated guidance so regulatory people are always helpful in case of legal and the technical requirement as per the current country specific requirement because there are lots of changes happening lots of guidances are coming up lots of rules are uh, changing so we have to keep ourselves updated and we help always you know the major contribution is what the company's success both commercially and scientifically am i right both commercially and scientifically because we have to justify in front of health authorities 
uh, with respect to the quality, uh, efficacy, and safety. And that is why we always have to see that how the dossier is compiled together, how all the data is brought together and filed in the format of CTD, ECTD, or ECTD as per the country specific requirement. CTD is a common technical document, ECTD is an electronic common technical document, ACTD is an Asian common technical document. So, as per the country specific requirement, we have to compile the dossier, submit to the health authority, and get the marketing approval. So the main role uh, is to comply with safety and efficacy of the product as per the regulation laid down by the government. So in an organization, their prime responsibilities involves preparation and presentation of registration documents to regulatory agencies and carry out all following discussion to obtain and maintain marketing authorization for the product concerned. And they need to keep a track of ever-changing legislation in all countries where the companies is looking to market their product. And also they are responsible for the presentation of registration document to regulatory agencies in India and importing countries and carry out all the subsequent negotiations necessary to obtain and maintain marketing authorization for the products concerned in country of origin as well as importing countries. Now here, suppose uh, if uh, company XYZ is uh, manufacturing in India, but they would like to register their product in US FDA, Europe, and later on, you know, uh, maybe in ROW countries. So, uh, regulatory people are, have to uh, know about the country specific rules and regulations, country specific format, and the ever changing legislation as per those countries. So, suppose uh, if uh, you are like uh, in India, the India would be the country of origin and now you are going to export to, uh, you know, China or Russia or US or Europe, then you have to learn those country specific requirements and you have to bring all the data together, compile in a format and make the nice presentation, good justification out of it because any health authority would not like to give a marketing approval unless and until you justify your product with respect to benefit versus risk. What does it mean benefit versus risk? Our product which are manufactured and registered should have more benefit to the uh, patient rather than the risk. So each health authority is again I'm telling you the main objective is to protect public health. So in protection of public health we have to meet those three parameters and we have to learn all the country specific requirement so that we help our organization in getting marketing approval as faster as possible. And must, uh, why RA is required? So by now you must have understood the importance of RA people in the organization because any company uh, has taken several years to develop a new drug because new drug takes Long time, right? They have to undergo uh, through different phases, right? From the non-clinical to clinical. So under non-clinical, they uh, go for the animal toxicity data, pharmacological data. They spend, uh, you know, a couple of years and uh, spend money also. Then they move towards the clinical phases. Again, clinical phases comprises of phase one, phase two, phase three. So like that, we have to spend, you know, uh, almost 10, 12, sometimes 15 years to develop a new drug. So, so much, so many years and so much money, if it is involved, uh, then why not any company would like to, you know, enter and register and get the marketing approval. So there is a huge competition in the pharma sector because the time taken by the product to reach market is, uh, uh, you know, high when you talk about the new drug development. But when you talk about the uh, generic, it takes two, 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 two and a half years, again, depending on the molecule and depending on the therapeutic category for which you are developing your drug, the generic drug. So, uh, again, the company is responsible for the discovery, testing, manufacture, marketing of those products. Also want to ensure that they supply products that are safe and make worthwhile, worthwhile contribution to the public health and welfare. Most companies, whether they are major multinational pharmaceutical companies or small companies, 
innovative biotechnology companies have special departments of regulatory affairs professional. So on an average, as I said, uh, 10, 15 to 20 years uh, uh, takes for the new drug development and almost more than 800 to 1000 uh, million dollar uh, is the expenses incurred during the drug development. And with such an expensive and time consuming activity, companies would not like to stay behind, right? They would not uh, uh, like to uh, you know, afford a single day delay in getting their product to the market. So RA professional uh, plays a very important role in getting those products to the market. But sometimes what happens if you compile improper data, if you are unable to justify your product, if the reviewer to whom you are sending the dossier is unable to draw some justification or evaluation, in, uh, then it will affect your marketing authorization and it may delay your uh, approval. So I hope you understood the RA professional roles and why RAs are required and what is the RA's main, uh, you know, function, roles, responsibilities uh, in the pharmaceutical industry, not only pharmaceutical, other industry as well. And this is a, you know, a short presentation about the RA career. So those who are willing to make career in RA, uh, this is a career ladder you have to uh, follow. Again, it depends on the, uh, the hierarchy is always depends on the company structure. If you are hired in a small uh, company, uh, you will be hired as an officer or you know the intern or something like that. So during my first three years, uh, you can be hired as an officer intern and uh, you become an executive. Then after three plus year, you may uh, be promoted to uh, executive, senior executive, or sometimes depending on your good performance, you may reach up to assistant manager level as well. And after five years, five plus year, you become a manager to senior manager, 10 plus year DGM, GM to HOD, 15 plus year associate director, director, vice president and president. So this is a general uh, RA career ladder. And again, I'm telling you, it depends on purely on your performance, and the company who is going to hire you. So uh, this is not the fixed uh, ladder which uh, I have presented over here. Uh, so you have to take this as an example, you know, those who are fresher, those who are at mid-level, how the career would be for them. Then these are the important skills and the attributes required for making a good RA uh, you know, professional. So first skill is influence IT literate. What does it mean now in this digital world? Everyone should be aware of how to Google, how to use internet, how to use country specific website, how to use the data, how to find out literature. So you should have you know, sufficient IT literate. So this is the most important skill which any RA professional would uh, like to have. Then negotiate work independently sometimes what happens if your boss or your seniors are away uh, from their duty and you are alone and you have submitted your uh, dossier or you are stuck up in you know compilation of your dos uh, dossier or data you are dealing with different stakeholders suppose sometimes what happens the production guys are not willing to give production record immediately uh, sometimes the stability data is not ready. Sometimes uh, R&D guys are stuck up with the validation data. So in that case, you need not to uh, dependent on your seniors or take help from others because you have to work independently. You have to learn work independently. This is very important a skill required by RA professional. Then pursue accuracy, quality, communicate articulately, listen actively, interpret and consolidate data. These are very, very important skills uh, which one should have to become a good RA professional. So pursued accuracy means what? Whatever data gathered, whatever compilation is done, it has to be thoroughly checked. You have to check whether the data provided by production or QC guy is accurate or not. Sometimes we have to use your calculator. We have to use our logic, you know, some data like dissolution, percentage of dissolution received, you have to literally calculate uh, what was the, you know, 
uh, the in the calculation the peak area the sample area divided by standard area into sample weight divided by standard weight into if any working factor is there so literally you have to check whether the data provided was accurate or not because you are the person who is going to submit this data with and uh, share this data with health authority and once it is wrong then you will be caught during the inspection so please verify whatever data coming to you for the compilation it has to be verified it has to be justified then present quality present quality means you have to present the quality document uh, quality records and everywhere quality is must am i right so you are dealing with different stakeholders and that is why quality plays an important role then communicate articulately so articulation is very important the effective communication is very important why i'm telling you effective communication is required because you are not only dealing with the uh, your internal stakeholder you are dealing with the external stakeholders like sometimes vendor external vendors then regulatory bodies notified body so the communication should be in a proper sense whatever you are communicating should be effective whatever you are communicating should be taken it in a positive manner in a well manner so you have to learn the skills how effectively you can communicate sometimes what happens uh, you, if you are dealing with your internal uh, stakeholder like qc production r&d uh, they become adamant you know when you talk in a, a language rude language yes i have a deadline and i need data right away you know if you are not able to give i will report to you into the higher management so this is not the way to talk to our colleagues our internal department so you should learn uh, how to speak to them how to get the work done how to get the work done amicably you know so this communication skill the people management skill plays an important role when you are into ra department then listen actively sometimes people are uh, you know not able to listen other person why because they have poor listening skills so when somebody is telling about their story or their problem what they are facing the challenges i will quote one example like uh, i used to work uh, in industry for 20 years so we have faced all the challenges while dealing with different people different production department so uh, you know when the deadline uh, was there to submit my nda and during the deadline there was hardly two days left and the stability accelerated six month stability data was not uh, uh, given by the production department uh, and i was just forcing them to why don't you provide uh, to after two days i have a deadline and i have to submit this nda and the person was telling madam uh, the one of the stability uh, chamber was not uh, you know, under proper condition and it was stopped in between so we have to uh, uh, we have lodged the complaint and the person uh, from the vendor the neutronic was not come and we are waiting so the results may go haywire we have to analyze you know the reanalyze we have to ensure the data or the results coming out of that uh, uh, was perfect or not and he was writing uh, his own uh, way uh, to explain but you know from other end we were uh, we used to sit in the ho head office and uh, the person uh, people working in the production so uh, we were behind the, you know getting the deadlines uh, uh, like we were afraid of missing the deadlines and they were afraid of getting data you know wrongly and presented to the health authority so in such cases you know you should have uh, some patience you should have understanding you should have a good listening capability Uh, and uh, this will really really helpful in a long term so listen to each person actively try to understand their problem try to introspect yourself and uh, you know try to look into their position uh, so the, all these skills uh, i would suggest if you are able to imbibe in yourself you become a very good ra professional then the last is interpretation of data and consolidation of data so suppose uh, uh, a data is coming from uh, the qc or the qa department uh, the coa is released in the coa i have seen that uh, water factor like wf would which is analyzed by carl fisher 
I have seen that zero month it was three percent, six month result it is six percent. Now I have to really, really interpret the why there is a three percent rise in the data within three months. Am I right? If uh, starting uh, analysis shows the result of three percent of water content, then three within three months it is it has gone to six percent. So I had to literally check what was the acceptance criteria, what was the limit given. Suppose the limit is three to six percent, and within that limit, if it comes, but still within that limit, within six months, if the there is a rise in water content from three percent to six percent. In future, it might not be acceptable to any health authority. So we have to suggest to our uh, development team that there is some issues. Either you have to change some excipient who is contributing that water factor. Either you have to change the packaging material, which is not good enough to take care of our product, or stability incubator you change. Or first thing is reanalyze those sample and check whether the data is accurate. So like that, you should have that ability to interpret and then consolidate your data and submit to the health authority. So my dear student, these are the very important skills when you really want to become a regulatory affairs professional. Now coming to what is a regulation? So regulation is a binding instruction issued by an agency that tells how to interpret and comply with a law. So law, when it comes, it has become mandatory, right? So regulation is a binding instructions issued by an agency. Agency could be your USFDA, Europe, Canada, right? So regulations are must follow. If you fail to follow, what will happen? You have an inspection. The FDA inspector must write up your failure on the FDA form 483, which is referred to as notice of inspectional observation. So all the regulation, all the raw laws have to be followed strictly. If you fail to follow, you are going to inspect your facility by USFD inspector or any other inspector. And you are going to receive inspectional observation. In USFDA, it is called Form 483. And in other terms, you know, the minor major critical observation is given by respective health authority. So failures to follow the regulation may end up in the issued warning letter, you must have seen in on the FDA side, lots of warning letters are issued by companies who are not able to follow the laws, regulation, and there are you know uh, the data integrity issues or any other issues. They are not following any compliance uh, validation as per the regulation laid down. So uh, this FDA website will uh, publish the name of the company if they are failure. You know, so you, you can see there are thousands of letters published as a warning letter, the 483 letters on US FDA website. And that is not a good place to be. Any company would not like to see their name on the, the FDA website as a warning letter. So please keep in mind that you have to follow the regulations because it is a binding instruction issued by an agency. So what is the difference between the laws and regulation? So they come from the different branches of government and have different functions. So laws come from the legislative bodies like Congress and state policy in broad term, whereas regulations comes from the executive branch and provide details on how the laws are to be implemented or how the laws are to be obeyed. So this is a simple example which will uh, make the difference, which will uh, give an idea about the differences between laws and regulation. Laws means the Federal Food and Drug Cosmetic Act. In India, we follow Drugs and Cosmetic Act 1940. So that comes under laws. When we talk about regulation, you might have heard about 21 CFR Part 11 compliant system. So regulation means Code of Federal Regulation, that is CFR. So there are several parts under this CFR, like Part 21 of CFR for Food and Drugs. So uh, if you go through this link, you will come to know that how the difference in between laws and regulation. But with this example, I'm pretty sure you understood the differences between laws and regulation. Now come to the guidance document. What is the difference between laws and regulation we have seen? Now come to guidance document. So 
So you have seen uh, many ICS guidelines under the quality, safety, efficacy, and multidisciplinary, and always ask to people whether those guidances are mandatory to follow. Ideally, no. We are not bound to follow, right? So guidances are the document that represent agencies' thinking, current thinking on a particular subject, but it is not binding. That means. you should read it to determine what the agency's view on a subject is or was at that particular time right so guidances are not mandatory but those guidances are written in such a beautiful way that if you uh, do not follow those guidances also there will be a trouble and you won't understand uh, what are the general practices uh, followed in the industry and that's the reason you know icih has written very beautiful guidelines and published uh, on their website called icih.org.com so if you refer to fda guidelines if you uh, under the cder and you can refer to icih guidelines under icih.org.com you will come to know and always try to refer to the current guidance because the guidances are published every 3 months to 6 months and it is kept for the public review if suppose the draft guidances are published you can give your comments you can review those and add your comments so always fda or ics body wait for the industry comments and they keep their guidances for review for 3 to 6 months so that it is publicly accepted and when it is accepted then only it is finalized so you have to always see to that what are the newly added guidance documents and those should be referred to then coming to what is the meaning of submission so submission submission you know you in re department you will always hear this term uh, today is my submission you know next week is my submission deadline but what is it submission is you know the ultimate product created by a regulatory department and they also in the terms of content format and quality which represent your company and your product what is meaning of content content is very very important which you bring together by dealing with different stakeholders the format whether it is ctd ectd ectd as per country specific and the quality how you represent the dossier so i hope you understood the meaning of submission is a ultimate product created by regulatory department with respect to content format and the quality which again represent your company and your product so regulatory submissions are complex document in every sense from editorial scientific and the paper management perspective at the same time this document represent the ideal opportunity for a regulatory professional to shine not just in quality of the final product but in the way the document is brought together so in a department if you have a uh, different uh, people with different team handling us submission europe submission rw submission so in a team of 10 people uh, the person who uh, brings all the documents together just able able to justify in a proper way uh do not make any mistake you know the dot comma error mistake is also uh, uh, to be looked into because when you go for publishing under ectd there will be a publishing failure so you have to make your document of very good quality uh, with respect to content format and other aspect so that you get an opportunity to shine in your department so suppose within a team of 10 people if your product is uh, registered and get the faster approval without any deficiency or minor deficiency that means you have taken a huge efforts to bring all together data you have analyzed thoroughly interpreted nicely and you have justified your product with respect to quality safety and efficacy and that's the reason fda or any health authority has given marketing approval as faster as possible so that becomes your uh, you know the that gives an idea of your performance so you did your job well you perform well you are you know you will be uh, uh, like getting promotion you will be promoted in future so that's how you have to uh, you know imbibe all those quality uh, within ourselves so now taking forward uh, to different regulatory bodies 
as i said this globe is divided into regulated market semi regulated market so regulated body generally are you know us europe japan health canada and if i may chare there are a couple of others and uh, our uh, india uh, the local domestic market and the international market so there are two markets as i said regulated or the semi regulated uh, some people call it as local or the domestic and some people call it as international or import export market so local domestic means uh, when we uh, compile dossier and register getting marketing approval within india it is our domestic market local market so registration of new product in our own country that is india for selling to the local market and our indian health authority is what dcgi and the cdso if you see uh, the dcgi the, the drug general controller of india uh, you will find many many guidances are published and we follow uh, the indian drugs and cosmetic act 1940 and the rule 1945 so this is about india uh in future lecture we are going to cover each country uh, you know separately now there are us fda so what is us fda you know food and drug administration it is a public health agency uh, charged with protecting american consumers from taking adulterated drugs and medicine then there is uh, ema that is european health authority uh, and uh, it has four different procedure called decentralized procedure or uh, then uh, centralized procedure national procedure and the uh, mrp that is mutually recognized procedure so when we talk about european regulatory bodies we will discuss all the regulatory uh, system involved into europe then there is health canada health canada is again a federal department responsible for helping canadian uh, maintain and improve their health while respecting individual choices and the circumstances the health uh, canada's goal is uh, the mission and health is mission and vision is health canada's goal is for canada to be among the countries with the healthiest people in the world so any country as i said any agencies would love to protect their health uh, protect public health i mean to say so if they are not able to protect public health like us we are uh, public we are patient then what's the you know a point in uh, having health authority so as i said there are couple of health authorities falls under regulated and semi regulated market like japan mhlw australia australian tga south africa mcc uk mhra who brazil so these are the different health authorities uh, which uh, we are going to cover in future ci is russia india cdso china is cfda it's not sfda because sfda is under uh, gcc area uh, now they have changed to sorry for this mistake it is ideally it is cfda chinese fda and sfda is for the gcc gcc is what uh, the saudi arabian uh, country the gulf gulf corporation so asian is again a southeast asian nation which has 10 different countries like singapore malaysia thailand philippines indonesia laos cambodia vietnam brunei uh, darussalam and myanmar and those are uh, following acfd that is asian common technical dossier then there is row that is rest of the world so as i said this globe is divided uh, into regulated and semi regulated market so these are different countries falls under different different segment and also there is around of that means rest of the world now now uh, i'm pretty sure that you understood the concept of regulatory affairs roles and responsibilities and how uh, we compile the dossier what are the skills required by a regulatory professional we have seen different regulatory bodies now move forward with how this india progressing what is our indian pharmaceutical industry just an overview so we have 80 years of history in india because bengal chemicals was formed in 1930 and we have patent act since 1970 right and there are lots of amendment after that uh, in 
and uh, you might have heard about intellectual property right our ipr so uh, with this history just see there is uh, you know there are more than 200 manufacturing unit in our india who has you know us fda approval there are so many uh, thousands of companies who have who approval so uh, with this you know you can see there are uh, infrastructure the state of the art facilities located in hyderabad uh, then ahmedabad then in uh, mumbai also the panvel taloja area in thane then uh, you move towards the south uh, you can see vizag visakhapatnam andhra pradesh all these are developing uh, segment uh, you know and uh, we have beautiful uh, manufacturing unit whereas all the corporate offices are uh, uh, into the metro cities like mumbai chennai hyderabad kolkata and so on so these are our strength you know we have qualified english speaking employees uh, then we have fair protection of intellectual property right then we have skilled scientists and technician and management personnel available in india and at the affordable cost and that's why many people outsource the services from india like you might have heard about the bpo kpo bpo is a business process outsourcing kpo means the knowledge process outsourcing so these are the companies like tcs accenture deloitte then capgemini uh, then uh, farmalink so there are so many companies uh, who uh, who has a business process outsourcing that means they outsource the services like pharmacovigilance regulatory publishing medical writing then uh, uh, cdm that is clinical data management then there are couple of other role like document specialist publisher or uh, you know these all so uh, services i hired uh, by uh, outsourced by these companies and uh, there is a huge opportunity for the regulatory people Uh, to work in this area so in a nutshell what i mean to say in indian pharmaceutical india, uh, industry there is lots of opportunity because of the economical cost and with the good quality and uh, the better infrastructure and we have a better uh, track record you know uh, in our advanced chemistry we have good r and d center we have good good bulk uh, drug manufacturers formulation manufacturer so we are the largest player to provide generic products all over the globe so if you see uh, worldwide we have captured you know uh, the revenue of worldwide pharmaceutical market is 1 trillion you know this statistic depicts that worldwide revenue of the pharmaceutical market from 2001 to 2014 but in 2001 worldwide revenue was around 390 billion US dollar and now 10 years later this figure has stood almost 1 trillion US dollar so it's a big change don't you see big change so that's how our indian pharmaceutical industry and it is uh, you know growing at the rate of cagr of 17.46% just see the figure uh, like US dollar 6 billion in 2005 and it's expected to expand at cagr of 15.92 percent in by 2020 so by 2020 india is likely to be among the top 3 pharmaceutical market by incremental growth and sixth largest market globally in absolute size so india's cost of production is significantly lower than that of the us and almost half of that of the europe and that's why many people invest in india because they get a uh, good quality of manpower a uh, good quality of supply or good quality of infrastructure you know everything and we give a competitive price not with respect to manpower but with respect to the quality which we offer to all over globe we are a manufacturing and export hub so indian pharmaceutical is the third largest in the world in terms of volume accounting for 10% of world's production total export of about us dollar 18 billion in 2015 to 16 now we export you know more than 200 countries india is the world leader in the production of generic drugs and vaccines you might have heard about during this covid also lots of people are manufacturing vaccine uh, from india 
you might have heard about uh, many many uh, thing like biocon then serum institute of india then hafkin there are so many you know uh, people uh, went into manufacturing of vaccines our bcg vaccine is also useful so every third dose of vaccine administered anywhere in the world comes from an indian manufacturing facility so that's the beauty of india so guys you have a bright future in india uh, and please uh, try to you know uh, learn more things imbibe the good skills to become a good ra professional and this is a just a drug development value chain this will be discussed in our uh next lecture about uh, drug development and uh, right from the discovery you know how uh, the drug is brought into market uh, how we are following going through the different phases like right from the drug r&d till the clinical trials in between there is a pre clinical that is uh, animal studies then phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 and then it goes for the submission so this will be discussed in detail uh, when we take the uh, next topic under drug development and others so uh, this is the you know r&d development process uh, it follows from drug selection pre formulation then development development optimization then we go for pilot bio, bio studies technology transfer exhibit uh, that is exhibit batch then registration batch then stability pure total bio study then regulatory and enter into market so this is the normal procedure which we follow from research uh, development till entry into market launch and that's all about uh, the regulatory affairs and the pharmaceutical uh, in india and i hope it is understood in a well manner thank you for your attention now the session is